I'm happy to be here this evening and glad that you could all come. I, uh, I always love to, to do these presentations and it's fun to have such a nice variety of topics and so many of you here. So I have got in your handout, the, in, your, in your packet, the purple handouts, Planning Fabulous Family Meals. And that includes um, both an outline and two sample menus. On the left-hand side of your packet, there are also white copies of the one-week menu and the two-week menu. We also put them in white in case that was something that you wanted to be able to photocopy. Or you can just make it your own if you'd like. How many of you, by a, a large, uh, raising your hand very high, how many of you are involved or are responsible in your household for planning meals? Okay, pretty much everybody. And how many of you are involved of, in cooking those meals once they are planned? All right, all right, I see some couples both raising their hands, I love that. You're just friends. I'm sorry. I thought you were a couple. Assumptions are never good, are they? <laughs> well, my family, my family is uh, growing and changing. I have four children. Two of them are not living in our home anymore. They're off doing uh, other wonderful things, and two of them still are. I've always worked full time, and my husband has an interesting job in that he works at home. And so we, to a certain extent, share the cooking but I am in charge of the meal planning and if it's on the menu and I've bought the stuff then he is going to cook it on Monday nights Monday night is his night to cook and I appreciate that a lot we I am a strong believer in meal plans I really think if you've got a plan for anything it's going to be more likely to happen how many of you do a menu or some type of pre preparation not quite as many hands but still quite a few that is good on my outline, I've talked about some of the benefits of planning meals, and um, I imagine that you have found these to be the case as you plan. It does take a little bit of time to plan a menu, but it saves a lot of time later. Uh, if it saved you minutes, a half an hour, a day, something like that, that's going to really add up over time. You can save as much as 15% of money when you plan meals. The research has shown that. And everyone has a different, uh, a different amount of money that they spend on food every month. But for a family that might spend $700 a month on food, 15% is equal to $100. And think of $100 a month over a year, over 10 years, how much money really can be saved by having a plan and following it. We are more likely to eat healthy foods when we have a meal plan. We have reduced stress because we don't have that constant question in the back of our mind. What am I going to have for dinner? Do I have it? Do I need to go buy some things? Do I have the time to make it? Whatever. We also are more likely to eat together when we have a meal plan. And eating together as a family is a very wonderful and valuable thing to do. Even for people that are living alone or just live with their spouse, we're more likely to have a set aside meal, meal time if we have a plan and that can be so valuable. So I've listed five steps in meal planning. The first one is to prepare. And this means that we set aside a time when we can focus on our meal planning and we gather the tools that we need. We need our calendar, we need some type of menu or just a piece of paper, whatever you decide to use. You need to have, uh, let's see, what else? knowing how much money you have to spend for food for that week or two. If I need to be really frugal with my food money, I need that will influence what I put on my menu. And if you have children at home that eat school lunch, then it's also a good idea to have the school lunch menu because if they've had tacos for lunch, they might not be as enthused about tacos for dinner the same night. We all feel that way sometimes. 
Step two is you're going to start with the food you already have. You're going to look at your pantry, your refrigerator, your freezer, look at the things that you have available and put those on the menu to begin with so you can enjoy them while they're still fresh. There are some ideas listed of ways that you can use leftover food that you have or a lot of our pantry items, you know, maybe I bought two packages of spaghetti and I've got one left or something like that so you can incorporate those in. Number three is that you're going to add favorite to uh, family favorites. If they're on sale, a lot of people like to plan their menu based on foods that are on sale and that could either be from the ads that they get in the paper or things that they see online. I don't do my menu week by week based on sales, but when things that I use frequently are on sale, then I stock up, stock up on them if I can. And so then that would be back on number two, starting with the food that I already have. I've listed some ways that you might categorize your family favorites, either by protein source or by types of food they are. Our family loves Mexican food, so we have Tortilla Tuesday. Every Tuesday we have something that is a Mexican meal. It doesn't always have tortillas, but a lot of times that it does. Another family favorite is breakfast foods, and we're busy in the morning. My daughter is just finishing an early morning class where she has to be at school before 7 o'clock. And so breakfast is pretty quick and we're not making a lot of the fancy foods. So Thursday nights we'll make buttermilk pancakes or we'll make German pancakes or we'll make omelets or things like that when we have a little bit more time. Planned overs is a wonderful thing to do too. Make two meals at once and freeze one of them. Other ways that you can pre-prep at least part of your food. Please make sure that you've included plenty of fruits and vegetables in your menus. We want to include at least three food groups in each meal. And fruits and vegetables are sometimes the ones that go by the wayside. So make sure you've planned the fruits, you've planned the vegetables, then you're purchasing the right amount and you're actually using them. The last thing you want to re do is to review and Double check that you've got foods from at least three of those food groups. Our family almost always has milk for dinner, so we've already got one thing that's, that's covered. And so then we make sure we've got a fruit and or a vegetable. We usually have some type of protein and some type of grain or starch. So I want to also let you know down at the bottom of this handout is a website that I've helped develop with the Eat Smart Idaho program that goes through Plan Smart, Shop Smart, Cook Smart, and Eat Smart and has good information and lots of templates and handouts including these ones that are here uh, that you can use. There is also a print version of the information that is on the website and it is available here. Some of our audience may not have internet access and so if this is a bulletin, a thing that you would like to have, but you don't really have access to the internet, if you would contact me, I've left, left my phone number and my email, I would be glad to get that to you. It's several pages, I think it's 25 or 30 pages or so. So that concludes my presentation. Do you have any questions or comments? I thank you for coming and I just would like to emphasize how valuable planning your meals are. It is such a savings and such a relief. I want to be thinking about other things, not wondering what's for dinner and do I have what to make it. So thank you so much for your participation.